Hi, this is Lily Cotilla. Welcome to Etching Life. In terms of our nervous systems and in combination with the level of oxytocin an individual innately has running through the system, a quick refresher, oxytocin is both a neurotransmitter as well as a hormone. It's released in pregnancy and breastfeeding and causes that bonding between mother and child. It's released in higher levels at the beginning of a relationship when or when there's distancing, such as a military partner goes off and then returns or someone gets back from a business trip. Levels of oxytocin are higher and therefore bonding is higher during those periods of time. Oxytocin... Um, allows for people to learn differently and receive information differently. Their articulation is vastly different whether someone is a high level or a low level. Their emotional responses are very different um, in range. So someone with high oxytocin would high, have a high am amplitude in a sinusoidal wave if it were laid out on a graph. And someone with a low oxytocin level would have a much more, um, like the y-axis wouldn't be as large in terms of the distance of that sinusoidal peak and the low peak. In any case, so in this world, people don't think of our words as being hypnotic. But the reality is, the more that somebody can think or visualize what other is saying, that the more he or she can really float there in story, if you will. They will go and float along with those words being described by the talker. And the listener with high oxytocin in mind will really go into those spaces. In fact, or even if he or she is talking, you can see if you're paying close attention to the eyes that when somebody is floating in a story, they get this glazed kind of look over their eyes versus their eyes being fully present in the now. This is when dialoguing is happening, right? I haven't heard myself other people discussing this variable, but it's something to take note of because if somebody is in their eyes reflecting in memory or mind or picturing the story of other, that means while their body is obviously still present and here in this shared moment together, they might be missing some things such as a Starbucks that's passing by or, you know, the color of the red dress of the woman walking on the sidewalk. Some things that might be seen by the person who isn't going there in the mind. It doesn't mean that that individual isn't paying attention attention or present in the surround it's just you know everything has its pluses and minuses right so I'm just introducing this topic as the food for thought so to speak but in terms of the nervous system for someone who has a high oxytocin level if like a POW for example in a war crime is being interrogated and investigated and interrogated and who knows what torture they're being put under and in talk who knows what's being said but in our daily lives many people will talk in certain ways that have high impact on a person with high oxytocin level and will cause them to have intense emotional reactions so keep it in mind that words carry a lot of weight for some people while for others they might slough like water off a duck's back neither is right or wrong it's not about being right or wrong it's just being in tune to how much words and imagery is having an effect and maybe you use that to your advantage and maybe you well either way I guess you use it to your advantage if you know I guess the idea is if the underpinning is that you're using it in a malicious way or a non-malicious way, a benevolent way, and of course that's ultimately up to you because the power is yours. I'm gonna give you some examples. Imagine you're at work and your house is at home and someone comes up to you and says, imagine what it would be like 
there are fires everywhere. Your house has gone down in flames. Your photograph books are all ru ruined. Your clothes are filled with smoke. Imagine going home this afternoon at five and your house is gone. I mean, it could be an actual reality, right? So the listener, if he has a high oxytocin level, might really go there in his mind, especially if he's had past exposure of trauma of sorts, or perhaps his grandmother's house really did burn down, okay? That individual might experience a very real somatic and visceral response to that imagined scenario. Now, what the intention of the talker was to bring and invite that scene on, I don't know. Does the listener know? I don't know. And is he affected? I don't know, but he sure could be. It depends on numerous variables, including oxytocin level, which increases the ability to really imagine it as being real rather than an imagined scenario, coupled with past exposure to similar or triggering, if you will, like the same route neurologically feels very familiar in the past. 